Roll camera. Mics up. And action. Live from Australia, streaming around the world. Around the world. The most cinematic podcast of your week awaits. This is Bottomless Popcorn with your host, Morgan Brown. Hey everyone, I'm Morgan and welcome to this episode. It is part two of Leon Murray's appearance on the show. Uh, now on part two, we're going to do Leon's uh, second favorite and favorite film. If you missed last week's episode, uh, his third and fourth were Duel and Rain Man. Uh, Leon's quite big on his films, uh, so we'll split this one into two parts, as you can see. So let's jump straight into it and do his uh, second and first favorite film. Let's find out what they are. Enjoy. Um, do you try and watch films that win awards get good reviews like do you take notice of this or what do you reckon based on i think it's a big yes i am this man this is where i live this is i'm a massive academy awards nerd i printed out sheets of like every winner going back through every category like all the nominees i had like i memorized who won and who didn't win it's uh, i don't know why but the oscars in particular uh very meaningful to me i i yeah. think uh, it's partly because it's history in the making yes um the heritage of it and the, the 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 value of it and i think it's just partly because um it's sort of you know it's sold in as the pinnacle but i think you know it, it and and it is in many ways like in terms of marketing and obviously every trailer is like oscar winner jennifer lawrence like you know, it means something, it's currency, but it's also just a beautiful piece of art. That actually, mm-hmm. that statuette was designed in, you know, 1926 or 1927 by like, a, you know, we're talking, these people didn't fuck around. They knew what they were doing. Like we're in the golden age, you know, and these studio designers and stuff, it was a production designer or, you know, a studio, an art, an, an actual artist that designed this statuette, which I think is genuinely one of the most uh, beautifully proportioned human objects yes. <laughs> of art that, that's ever been yeah. that, that graces the face of the planet i really genuinely believe that i think it's yeah. a, be- a beautiful object so i'm very taken with the statuette but i'm very taken with the history and i'm and i'm and i'm also obsessed with it happening every year so like i said i you know oscar predictions i listen to podcasts i read oscar blogs i look at yeah. you know uh lists of other people's um stuff and you know i know that's <laughs> probably almost everyone listening to this is like what yeah. a fucking waste of time does this guy yeah, say man. he had three kids cool. because they must be missing him right now because <laughs> he is not spending time yeah. with them but i named one of my children oscar so oh there you go <laughs> if that gives you some indication of how you know this answer is important yeah. to me yeah uh, i guess you like it a little bit then so there you i'm go. really yeah. into it man and uh i just yeah i was pumped when i you know got i think last year there were 23 oscar categories because they combined sound mixing and sound editing yes and i got 19 uh oh nice one out of 23 so that was i think i've once had a 20 out of 24 years so yeah it's yeah the same thing cool but um yeah it's uh more speaking more generally like ratings and stuff it it, it, it does matter to me like i I yeah. always have an idea of like a movie's like their Rotten Tomatoes score, their Metacritic rating, what they rated on IMDb, like just the general perception of something mm-hmm. before before I go in, like just to know, I don't need spoilers. I don't need to know like everything about it. I don't need to even know the plot or anything. I just like to know who directed it, who's mm-hmm. in it and how's it landing? What is, what yeah. you know, what's the general consensus? Is it a 50? Is it an 80? Is it a 99? Like just, yeah. and that doesn't mean that that helps me make up my mind about what it's going to be, but it, it informs me uh as to sort of what i'm going to perceive when i'm sitting in the theater you know and i I think you know there are certain things where it's like when you're at home there's stuff you can scroll through stuff where you're like no i'm going to give this the full you know respect it deserves um and you know to be frank like the sort of the cliff of the big red dog you know you can (laughs) (laughs) do you know what i mean and then where it's like you know go to see june or no time to die or the father yeah. And, you know, people have, like, anyone who's worked on any of those, including Clifford, has worked hard on it to make it. Yes. I have no doubt about that. And I have full respect for anyone who, yeah. who does it. Um, but when you're talking about something that might be in the conversation for awards, you're in a different, you know, yeah, league. For and sure. uh, I really, I really like, I really feel quite proud of sort of uh, knowing and feeling like I know kind of, 
who is in the conversation for winning Oscars yeah. and who isn't based on what they've put on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Because um, yeah, I cool. think you can get your radar quite tuned into who will make the cut and who won't. And, yeah. you know, that's a difficult thing. It, it's sort of hard yeah. to define, but for there's sure. a, there's a thing about it that you can tap into to kind of figure out. And that yeah. really, <laughs> it really excites me yeah, uh, nice. as you can tell. So uh, yeah. Very good. Nerd alert all over yeah. the answer. Big sirens all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a film you've seen you really loved, uh, but you've kind of come back to it more recently and had a, maybe a change of heart or a change of opinion about it? Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was thinking about this and I actually, it's, I don't want to be too mean, but I, I reckon Juno, do you know that movie where the girl, the teenager is playing? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Jason Reitman film. Yep. Yeah, I just, you know, it's got that mid 2000s sort of slack core, mumble core vibe, you know, real, really hip at the time. I think it was 07. Um, I think Diablo Cody maybe yep. won the Oscar for writing it. I think so. And um, it's just so affected, man. I went back to it at some point. I might have been on a plane or I might have been, you know, sort of like, oh, Juno. Yeah, and best place really, to watch a film too. Yeah, well, it it, <laughs> I, uh, it was kind of cringeworthy, just some of the sort of, you know, that dialogue that's just so hip. It's just sort of yes. too, like, uh, yeah, I found it kind of, I, I actually have a feeling American Beauty would be a bit cringe now too. Okay, yeah. Possibly for, possibly mainly for the spacey reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, But yeah, just, I, I think I mainly just mean when like dialogue is just, you remember a period in time when people were like, oh my God, that's so clever. And then now you go, oh, Jesus Christ, could they have been trying any harder? You yeah. know, like it just has yeah. that affected feel to yeah. it. Something um, I watched the other day, I felt exactly that way mm. watching it. I can't think what it was, but I remember just being like, oh my God. What yeah, is, right. This I mean, it's so written. Like, Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to say, like to sit here and say that. Like tastes change and, you know, yeah. sometimes films can kind of create something which other films then um, have the privilege of sort of running in their tracks that they've kind of carved out. And then so that yeah. original thing can then have that feeling like in yeah. you know, future years, which is sort of like where if you know film history, it's handy that comes in, you go, well, no, hang on. You've got to respect this for what it did at the time because it yeah. carved something out that then was like a trough that all the other films came and, you know, sort of, yeah. you know, wallowed around in like pigs in mud. So yeah, yeah it, it could I don't know. I just, yeah, it just sprung to mind because I just sure. feel like it's trying, you know, quite yeah. hard. We got- um, what's a film you've seen you really liked, but you probably won't ever watch it again? Just saying it the once was enough. I, you know what? Um, there's a, <laughs> there's a, I saw this last year, I think. It might have even been earlier this year, but there's a Peck and Pa, Sam Peck and Pa film called um, Straw Dogs. Mm-hmm. Dustin Hoffman's in it. It's seventies, early seventies. I think it might have even been seventy-one, and that year was like a Clockwork Orange, and maybe something else from. Okay. There's like three films that just would have, like, audience would have been like, "What the fuck?" I mean, like, because <laughs> yeah. there's just these intense, violent, psychologically yeah. disturbing, like, real genre-shattering stuff, and it yeah. was really, it was, yeah, it was tense, it was disturbing, it was psychological. And just really, again, 50 years old, totally holds up. Really, really excellent exercise in tension. And mm-hmm. again, big time themes of like emasculation and masculinity in there. It was just really extraordinary. Like um, even the way he uses sound design at the end, particularly the sort of, it's about a couple and they're defending their house and village, like sure. people around the village kind of come and there's a bit of an attack scene and just the sound design of them attacking the house is deliberately over the top, like very, very um, overdone to it, to an unrealistic yeah. degree, but it's done intentionally for that reason. And it really stayed with me. It's a, uh, yeah, I'd heard for years and even through film, like at college and, you know, this straw, like straw dogs, it's a, you hear about it, like you hear about a clockwork orange, like this, mm-hmm. it, it's reputation precedes it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, yeah, it was, a real eye-opener it was quite a piece of work um yeah sure but you know once is probably enough i think enough yeah it just yeah it was sort of intense in a way that um it does leave a a a dark um sort of uh, stain on you (laughs) don't know how else to explain it but i I put the revenant for myself i put the revenant in that category 
that's a it's really also one point. that i think about for length too like it's quite a long movie like that's a that's a long movie to sit in that space for yeah like, that's true and it's a bit bit of a grim kind of story and it's a bit like that's true really i mean well how many made, times really do you need to see a guy sleep inside a, bear. a horse yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. i know right was it yeah. a horse or didn't he cut yeah didn't he go over he the sleeps in a horse yeah he sleeps in a horse and he gets well, something by else happens to him yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yikes. <clears throat> yeah, that's the one. What movie uh, surprised you the most? So you went in with no expectation, but you came out really glad that you had you had seen it. Um, do you know The uh, the Invisible Man? Uh, you know, yeah, the Lee Elizabeth Linnell? Moss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a banger. Yeah, it's good. I really dug it. I thought it was just tight. It worked. It was just everything. You know, it was super effective. Yep. I think it had a lot to say. Obviously, it wasn't just an Invisible Man movie. It's, you know, you, there are many ways to slice yeah. the themes of that and, and what obviously, yeah, in the times that we live with, yeah, kind of yep. gaslighting and Me Too and all this. It was really, I thought it was just so, so well executed. I was yeah. super impressed with it. And then I watched it at home and it was super impressed with it again. And Elizabeth again. Moss, man, that's like a... Sigourney Weaver and Aliens, Linda Hamilton type of that's that is a she absolutely tore that thing apart. Like that is yeah. not easy to do. And she was excellent. Like I was like genuinely, there's two female performances that there's three actually in the last couple of years in horror that genuinely deserved awards attention. And it was mm-hmm. Elizabeth Moss in Invisible Man. It was um Tony Collette in Hereditary. Yes. Insane. Brilliant. Yes. Fantastic. And um is actually uh, Florence Pugh in Midsummer. Yes. All three yeah. of those women in those films are extraordinary. And yeah. and they take those roles. I, th- I think the they will be the ones. So just then, even when you were talking about it, you were saying like that's like the Sigourney Weaver. But I think, as we're saying, as we move further and further away from them, I do think those ones in particular, and in particularly the Ari Aster ones, like the Tony Collette mm. and, and Midsommar one, yeah. um, they will probably start to become, I think, the, they, you they know what I mean? New, like the, the new touchstones. Yeah, oh, as that'll people be the Tony move Collette away from. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Actually, it's funny. I didn't even quite realise in the moment that I named two Ari Aster movies there. Yeah. So but that's um, the way that he directs women is... I can't wait for the next film, the next one from Ari Aster, yeah. because for that reason, they just, I, I almost went with Midsummer for one of my four, to be honest with sure. you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Very good. Um, anyway, I, I will say too, that uh, Invisible Man is one that was very good for the sound design. Oh too, yeah. Theatrically. Well, of course. Yeah. Like, for obvious reasons. How good. Playing with a lot of the negative space of Absolutely. things that are there, but are not. And, kind of oh, using man. the atmos stuff too was really yeah really so so well yeah. shot yeah that's really cool yeah and he lee Winnell, he just did upgrade before too so he was doing a lot of stuff with that motion control yeah rig. Right. so there's a lot of those really sharp uh it's not sorry not sharp uh really short moving precise camera mm-hmm. movements and stuff which mm-hmm. is kind of like the knife attack where there's no one there in the in her kitchen at home and stuff like that and yeah he did I don't know if you saw Upgrade, the Australian film he did oh. uh, before it, but similarly has moments where um, that was all shot in Melbourne, I think. You're right. I'm sure it's an Australian film uh, where he does like the character for reasons pertinent to the story, does okay. some incredible things. And so the camera to accentuate that is this motion control thing that does these really sexy, yeah, shit, yeah. cool camera moves and stuff, you know? So Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I know there was yeah. motion control in the kitchen scenes in they yeah. shot that in Australia too, Invisible Man. Yes. That's um, I think that's Sydney. I'm pretty sure yeah. they are. I'm pretty sure they're out of Fox studios, which so is good. cool. Well, speaking of strong females, I think that takes us to my 90s yes. choice. Doesn't it? This is your third trailer, your final trailer before we get to the feature film. And this is for Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Look, I don't know if it's an obvious choice or a, a cliche or just, I don't know what, but I, I, how can, I can't go past one of the greatest films of all time. It just is. And yeah. um, it's iconic. Terminator 2 is, it's iconic. And um, when you think of how, it could have gone off the rails. Um, and it's only it was only seven years after 
Terminator, mm -hmm. or the Terminator, I should say. And yet the achievement that this film is over and above that original is like it can't be overstated, I don't think. I could see it it changed everything, I think, Terminator mm -hmm. 2. I really do believe it. And um it's another film for me where again I grew up with it. And again, I think every element is nearly every element in the film is perfect. Um yeah. and it still works. Uh yeah. and just so intelligently done i love the way that it like broke new ground in, in vfx yeah um i would have killed to have seen it in the theater for the first time i would have uh, been it? yeah 11 and a half um yeah. probably too young but um and i would have had no clue like of the history of the story either um but i've made up for it since because i've just i bought it on every format of home <laughs> media mm -hmm. and um you know, you talk about strong women like James Cameron directed Aliens as well. And, you know, Sigourney Weaver got an uh, Academy Award nomination for Best Actress for Aliens. It's, you know, sh that, that's pretty, uh, pretty much unheard of. And Linda Hamilton deserved one too. Um, she was equally as good. And I, I, I mean, it's not a complicated, again, you could, I think each of my films, you could sort of sum up the plot in five words, you know, a truck chase a car. Uh, and this is a, a robot protects a boy, really. Like, I mean, but the way that um, he gets you invested in how that happens is just so, it's so brilliant. It's so, yeah. it, it looks insane. It sounds insane. And there's so many iconic elements and scenes, I think, that it just, I'll never get tired of watching it. You know, the canal chase and the, the motorcycle jump and then all the way through to the end with the, you know, the helicopter scene and the liquid nitrogen truck and the ending at the smelting plant and yeah. like the, the twins at the hospital with the checkered floor and, you know, the coffee cup mm -hmm. with the, you know, spike through the eye and get, yep. you know, Janelle with them and the husband with the milk carton and that, you know, yeah, like yeah. All another one that's true just... that is, um, is either referenced, imitated yeah. or mentioned still oh. to this day. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, still, I do. What, what, a, what a genius move to have like this enormous 300 pound Austrian guy as like one element of the story. And then you cast Robert Patrick, you know, with these, this live, you know, he's very fit. He's very lean. He's got unusual ears. Like he had an incredible mm -hmm. look, you know, and just like, and he just looks, he's fucking evil. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, And I love, I really appreciate how, like I think it's deepened in my mind as well because even though um, they're not necessarily always in every like cut that you watch, I've looked at those it's like I know those extended cuts and those director cuts and those scenes where you know like he starts learning because like in the director's cut they do a surgery on him in the gas station overnight and there's a chip and they sort of flip the chip to like you know self learning mode or whatever you know mm -hmm. there's sort of like two modes he can be in so if you know that then even if you're not watching the version with that scene in it, you sort of realize that, you know, the film is, he is the, like, that's why he starts saying shit like yes. hasta la vista. And, you know, yeah. I know now why you cry and he's learning, you know, even it's, I mean, there's so much of it that's absurd. Like he does a thumbs up, you know, as they're defending, they're it's descending the, into the yeah. lava, but it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a, it is a genie. It's a master stroke because yeah. it just speaks to the, like, I don't know everything that's come before it, and and also it's endlessly gifable now. Like, I, there's not a week that goes by that I don't send a lava thumbs up, you know, mm -hmm. to m one of my members of my family, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, of it sure. descending into the lava because it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, and um, yeah, I just you know what more can you say about Terminator Two? Like that man's a, a genius. Yeah, uh, he really yeah, is, and he, yeah. the fact that he he writes and creates this stuff and then goes on and directs it like i mean talk about you know you can you can talk about kubrick and cure you know kurosawa and your auteurs but why can't this be an equally yeah. as respected as an auteur yeah 
you know, creation and an altered achievement. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's because it's successful. I think is honestly why it doesn't get put because, in this because it's genre and because it's yeah. robots and lasers and yeah. you know, and cyborgs and skin being peeled off of arms and stuff. Yeah, because it's, things um, blow up and people get shot. But I mean, yeah. it doesn't detract from the fact that the drama is that humanity is at stake. One person's protecting, one person's attacking, and then there's this maternal storyline yep. that's mixed up through it. And yet she's, you know, as equally as badass as the Austrian yeah. oak, you know? Yeah, exactly. Insane. Brilliant. Love it. <laughs> this obviously was another one where I was struggling to find trivia that I didn't think you would already <laughs> right. you know, kind of know. And then I the ones like two of the ones that I got, one I kind of think I'm now a bit of an idiot for getting, but had to do with Academy Awards for the film. So yeah. Uh, until Born Ultimatum and Mad Max Fury Road, this was uh, the only sequel to win an Academy Award when previous installments uh, received no nominations. I did not know that. Yeah, so, of course. Oh, good. Okay. I'm glad you didn't know that one. No, though. I That's didn't. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, I mean, I knew I th- that original Termino wouldn't have been nominated for anything, but then, yeah, it's that, it's interesting, isn't it? That it, and it won four, I think, as well. Yeah. Terminated two, yeah. which is, Again, a testament to like I like we were saying before, I think people will hang shit on the Academy a little bit and sort of some of their choices, but you gotta um respect that they will award genre when it's deserved. Like look at Mad Max Fury Road, you know, like yeah, you know, or look at Black Panther, like both of those films won costume design, I think, of all things. Like, so they don't always have to go, oh well, here we'll give it to the regal patrician, you know, ball gown yeah. movie. Like if something's genuinely an extraordinary achievement. Of course, Terminator 2 deserved visual effects and sound design. It was nominated yeah. for cinematography as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it just was an extraordinary achievement in, in, your, in those ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I always love when something like that will come along and, you know, sort of almost like nudge like a quote unquote proper film out of yeah. the way and jump in there. Because it's like, yeah, good. It shouldn't matter what the film is like if it does something i mean even norbert was nominated for an oscar for makeup right yeah and that doesn't mean the film is, is worthy of, yeah yeah exactly yeah. yeah so what you're saying that's that's true mm. yeah i agree um this was another and the other cool fact i really thought you'd enjoy it's not a particularly about the film but the terminator 2 outgrossed terminator in just four days of its Amazing. theatrical release, which that is sounds that's, about right. That's and that seems to be very on trend with how everything happens now. You know, like at the sequel uh, often <laughs> outperforms the predecessor in Indeed. far quicker time. You know, like that's oh, uh, that's funny, kind of crazy. Four but, days, well done. Yeah, well deserved. Indeed. I wish I made that kind of money. I also I brought this up once with someone else in one of the episodes too. I'll ask you, so I haven't put it on your thing. So why do you think that, see, when we talk about movies, why do you think the dollars made is like always the first, like you or I have no financial investment in a film. So why does that matter to you or I when people go, oh, did you hear like this made a billion dollars? That's, you know, like I I don't understand why that's like the metric. I think it's because it means other people have seen it, which validates your choice. Yeah, like okay. if you know, if you're like, well, look how many other people have seen it and liked it too, then that is yeah. validating that you think okay. it's good. I think that's that's a big part of it, you know. Yeah, sure. Like okay. you don't want to be shouting from the rooftops, you know, that this is the best movie ever. It's like, well, mate, it made thirty bucks. No one likes it. So what are you yeah, talking about? Exactly. So I think I, you know, so, kind of deep down, that's part of it. Yeah, and I like I just nowadays too with streaming, they release a weirder metric that I don't think is like. Well, they've just changed it. Like Netflix have changed their metrics. So now it's how many hours, hours has it viewed in the first 28 days? Because it used to be like two minutes counted as a household view. View, yeah. But are they, even to me, that's, you know, I don't know why they don't just count. I don't know why it's not a count of tickets sold. Mm. Do you yeah. Know, like, uh, uh, I know because uh, uh, then, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, they're saying, well, Avengers Endgame is, and I was like, well, what about Gone with the Wind? Like, it's, yeah, you know, adjust in, for adjusted for inflation. The, yeah. It's, you know, it's sold it's uh, more tickets than anything. So yeah, yeah, it does. It sucks. It's unfair. I think when you've got, I mean, I think uh, I just, I just Jurassic think it's a Park weird metric. Made so much yeah. money in 93. And then I don't know whether, I don't know where that sits on the overall list now, but I mean, I, I think it would still be 
well and truly like Jurassic Park and E.T. and Star Wars mm-hmm. and those films, the ones that effectively Spielberg and George Lucas were in effectively a two-man race, one upping each other from 1975 through to 1994 or something, you know, yeah, one after the other. Oh, you make Jaws, I'll make Star Wars. Oh, you make yeah. Raiders, I'll make, you know, obviously half of these are doing together, but they yeah. consistently flip-flopped. Yeah. Um, and and you know broke each other's records and i think jurassic park kind of topped it i think it made yeah 900 million or something in 1993 dollars sure i don't know if that's correct but yeah it was well and truly up yeah. there but it's well, like it is um it should be adjusted for inflation because you know if a ticket back then is seven bucks and now it's 21 yeah that's what i mean yeah it's it's bizarre i yeah, I always do something I always wonder, and the more I see it change, I just don't understand why it's the metric is not, yeah, a view rather than dollar spent on the view or hours spent, yeah, consuming exactly. the view. Like I just think it's weird. Like it's, 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 it's obviously a way, like I, mathematically looking at it, it's like a flex that we made yeah. this much money. Yeah, but also like it's like you it just doesn't... compute. It's computing to be a bigger number than it. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I agree. It's it actually not is, yeah. It's it's bizarre. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Well, we'll ne- anyway. one thing's for sure: we'll never see any of that money. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'll move on again. Great. Here we go. This is uh, who plays Leon Murray in the Leon Murray biopic? Oh, what a terrible film! What? <laughs> that's, I'll tell you how much money that's making. Zero. Sure. I, okay. I've been I've been told um, Edwin Norton is the actor that I look oh, most okay. alike. Yeah, but I don't look like anyone. But I, yeah, he's you know now too old. Uh, but I, you know, I, who I would pick, Donald Gleason. Okay, he, yeah, he's eight yeah. inches taller than me, and he has red hair, and we, he looks nothing like me, and he's sure. not the right nationality. <laughs> yeah, but I just I I love his energy. I love okay. him in, in everything he's done. He's got this cool sort of disarming, slightly goofy. It just everything he's done. He did a great episode of Black Mirror. He was amazing yeah. in that About Time movie with Bill Nye and Rachel McAdams. Yeah. He was incredible in the, like when he's playing that evil, you know, in Star Wars uh, kind of general guy. Yep. Um, yeah, he's awesome. He's really good. But as I say, way too tall with the wrong hair and doesn't <laughs> look like me and is not yep. Australian. So I don't like the sure. chances. But uh, yeah, he's got a good. Uh, he's got a. He's got yeah. something about him that is just very relatable. I think you know, and okay. not. Um, he's he's right in the middle of that. Um, yeah, yeah. Handsome and 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 ordinary looking. You know. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. If what about this? What if the film was animated? Would you take the risk and voice yourself? <laughs> what kind of shit animated film? <laughs> Honest to God. <laughs> uh yeah well, look i'd definitely audition but i mean i don't know if they'd give me the part. yeah we just sure. have to wait and see <laughs> there we go we'll see what happens <laughs> i should have actually i probably should have mentioned earlier in the episode most i think people listening to this might recognize your voice as a uh, big brother from this the years guy. 2008 this to 14 that you're this is the one to, aren't you you're saying that's the one Morgan, it's come to my attention that you've been doing unspeakable things alone in the bedroom and the, <laughs> on the work at the, bench behind in the dead me, of yeah. night. And <laughs> your brother has no choice but to evict you immediately. Oh, all right. I'll take my way out. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. You know, little known fact, um, when there was uh, not that much to do, we would throw movies on for the housemates um, just oh, to basically cool. kill time. So, yeah. you know, if... Uh, was that like to, to buy time for yourselves as in to like have them no, do nothing so you could edit and keep up to date or just... A little bit. It's sort of like if we've if the day is done and there's enough scenes, you know, for the show and if there's really no big agenda, then, um, yeah, sometimes we'd just put on a movie. Uh, yeah, cool. Or like if they wanted something special and they got to go to a special your room and be alone like you yeah. know take a friend with you then they'd be like you can watch a movie because they were starved for any kind of attention you know sure. like or anything like to do or read or watch or anything yeah, that yeah. wasn't just talking so w- would you yeah. curate what they could watch as well yeah that's yeah decided by someone else oh yeah it'd be like here's a selection and they would choose something you know you know invariably some vacuous horse shit which you know yeah then <laughs> line up on some projector somewhere and then kind of yeah 
yeah then we're just sitting around watching them watching a movie for two hours yeah, cool. so. good times interesting yeah very cool <laughs> no nice what about um in the space of like voice work actually have you ever done like movie trailers and stuff like that as well like tv movie that kind of voice work in a world yes like, exactly what i was going to lead to yeah. <laughs> one man two men the trailer for comedian jerry seinfeld's documentary comedian is a very good trailer where they get the voice yes. of the guy and it's like one man no there's there's no man two men. <laughs> no forget the man it's very funny there's also a great um movie i think like bell called in a world it. yes yeah i was gonna bring and that up to I think, yes. um is it fred um Med, what's his name yes Mel, I know the fred guy Melamed, yeah who yep. plays a dad i think who and he is, is like supposed trailer to be video. the don lafontaine yeah that's right voice guy there's it, also yeah. another great youtube where three or four of those movie trailer vo guys all get in a limousine together so you've yeah. got the Don LaFontaine sort of in a, in a world, one man kind of. And then there's the sort of Disney, like um, Timon and Pumba are back sort of, yeah. you know, the, this Christmas, a magical story. That That's yeah. sort of Disney chipper guy. And there's like four of them all together. And you can, it's spooky to watch because you can yeah. like hear your childhood crashing through your brain as they do this scene. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I'll move on again. What about, uh, do you have a favorite like line, like piece of dialogue from a, from cinema or a movie oh, in general? This is so hard. I this bet is, it would be. This is, this is one killing that's, like, me. very I, I, I like like bite-sized lines. Like I mm-hmm. love uh, little, beautiful little curlicue lines that don't have a lot of impact in the story, but they're just this delicious little cherry on top of a bow on top of a Sunday, sort of like, um, and in Glorious Bastards, I love when Hans Lander is sitting with her and the scones arrive and he goes, uh, uh, attende la creme. Like just <laughs> he's saying, wait, wait for the cream to arrive before you eat the scone. Like attende la creme. I say genuinely all the time to my friends, yep. like when I want them to wait for something, it's sure. just stayed with me. And it's such a <laughs> dumb throwaway thing. And it's in French and no one, you know, it's 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 so obscure. It's so obscure, but I love attende la creme. Okay. And I love... I love when Daniel Plainview says, I'm finished at the end of There Will Be Blood when he yes. beats Eli's head in with a bowling pin and it's the the climax of the entire movie. Mm-hmm. And again, I often will say, you know, push myself away from the table after a meal. I'm finished! <laughs> because it's just such an, it's such an insane thing to say after you've clubbed somebody to death. Yes. Um, uh, it's brilliant. I mean, Paul Thomas Anderson, we haven't even touched on in this podcast, but Jesus Christ. And I'm really excited. I've got a screening next week of Licorice uh, Pizza. Licorice Pizza. Yeah. Which is yeah, cool. something I'm really, really looking forward to. There Will Be Blood is was genuinely very close to making this list of four. Um, mm-hmm. And Daniel Day-Lewis, I think, is he created something for that film that I think is going to... That will be one of those test of time performances that people discuss like you were saying we were saying before um yeah it was absolutely incredible i was so happy yeah. he won an oscar for a very intense and and strange and um, unforgiving kind of character like that yeah and i also really like when <laughs> in true lies one of my favorites actually this would answer the comedy question because true okay. lies is one of the funniest films i think ever made even though it's you know not really meant to be but um when, <laughs> when arnold schwarzenegger goes to test drive the car with bill paxton because he's obviously tracking him because he knows he's a spy having an affair with his wife yes, yes. Where, you know he's you know pretending to be a spy and and he gets Bill Paxton to describe to him like what his MO is for like attracting these sort of bored housewives. And he describes to him that he pretends to be a spider, sort of like lure them away from their husbands. And Arnold Schwarzenegger says, what about their husbands? And Bill Paxton is eating a sandwich. <laughs> he spits he, he back a dickless. <laughs> This is one of the greatest line readings yeah. of any character in any film ever made. It's, sure. it's, it's one of the <laughs> funniest responses to anything in any film ever. Dickless. What okay. about their husband? Yeah. Dickless. And this egg, <laughs> egg and lettuce sandwich kind Just of flies out yeah. as he says the word dickless. I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, you can't beat Bill Paxton in, in True mm-hmm. Lies. You really can't. And it's, it's, 
<laughs> what a what a bittersweet thing that he's no longer yes. with us because that film, my God, what a <laughs> that scene alone really is like. I mean, if there were kind of three minutes of film that you know I could like keep forever, the, yeah. the car scene from True Lies has really got to be up there, man. It's 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 gold, absolutely. Yeah, gold. nice. No, cool. That's that's a good one. I've never heard someone simply mention a single word as the yeah, favorite line. That's, that's one awesome. of my favorite lines. Is one <laughs> yeah. word. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about favorite character from uh, from oh, cinema? Boy. Well, I got to tell you, Hans Lander, Daniel Plainview, and and that car salesman yes. would probably be right up yeah, there. But uh, actually, the lead in my feature film coming up okay. is yeah, one yeah. of my favorites too. So I'll save we'll circle that. back but, to that one in a second. Um, yeah. You know what? I I genuinely think my all time favorite characters aren't even human. Cause yeah. I think it's tie between you gotta stay with me on this. I reckon it'd be a tie the T eight hundred from Terminator Two. Mm-hmm. Uh or Herbie the Love Bug. Okay. Yeah. Uh- interesting there's yes, a, a robot or a vw it's really yep. what we're choosing between not a human okay yeah yeah and that's interesting i mean you know that's an absurd answer but um i just yeah i love herbie i just grew For i sure. grew up on herbie and he's just he's the coolest and okay. i've you know been uh he he embedded my love of Volkswagen beetles into my yeah. uh, heart you know so nice he's a cheeky chap you know Herbie yeah. with this little little horn that he honks and his, you know, <laughs> little wheelies that he does and his little cheeky yeah. you know, gear shifts when nobody's expecting him to kind of race around and do all his For hijinks. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. uh <laughs> that's in such a dumb answer, but uh okay. I just love those yeah, those characters something about the um something about the kind of humanity, I suppose, in the you know, non humanness of those characters is just so sure. it's just fun to watch, you know. Of course. Um, what about your favorite filmmaker? Like, no matter what they make, you're seeing it because it's they've made it. You know. Well, you. you know, people say, "Who would you invite to a dinner party, dead or alive?" So, dead favorite filmmaker Kubrick. Okay. Like with at number one with clear space underneath. Like, there's just he just Kubrick. It's all been said. You know, there's no, I, you know, the, it's where he puts the camera, and. Mm-hmm but there's so much more to like, it's not just so much more than look. It's about mood and how it's conveyed with like where he places the camera and, and cutting yeah. too. But yeah. Yeah. I think if you were to like, if your metric was uh, a filmmaker who has imprinted like indelible filmic images into the, the collective consciousness of audiences yeah. globally, like there's no one else. There yeah. really isn't. There is no one else. It's, it's, it's Kubrick. And yeah. then alive is Fincher, and I put them in the same okay, yeah boat because for me it's about it's camera placement, it's this it's the stillness, like the it's having the control to allow the stillness of the camera yeah. and the and have, have that be a very locked off filmmakers which I really yeah. respect. Like this, the framing of some of their framing choices are just. Yeah. It just conveys so much where you put it and when you where you put it and how long you leave it there. It's yeah, incredible. Exactly. And the mood yeah. that you can do with that, they just have total control yeah. over total control, complete control over what story they're putting in front of you and what they're feeding into your eyeballs and how they're doing it. And they're absolute, they're both masters of yeah. using equipment to do that. And so yeah. they are creating they are they it's, are it's more, such restraint. Is, it's, yeah. it's like the restraint. It's like, restraint. Absolutely. Which is crazy. Cause I remember like when I did the year of like film, it wasn't a film school, but like film study and stuff like that. Yeah. When you get the gear, you literally, you don't, you almost want to skip the step of it standing still and you go straight to moving it around yeah. and all this sexy yeah. stuff. Yeah. And like, you, like, you know, like the, their ability to have all that equipment and. And just, not go nuts with it yeah and that's what something i find with spielberg is like i was watching the post and they're in a living room talking about whether they print an article and there's a fucking crane shot like it's swooping in on the camera i'm like what are you doing yeah so what's the what is that for like why yeah why at that moment i'm you know it's probably trying to express well this is there's heightened emotion and it you know goes from the ceiling and swoops into this but i'm like they're having a conversation yeah it's it's i just find that very yeah 
I'm like, oh, he couldn't help himself, you know? Yeah. yeah. Spielberg. And, but I will say, I think for newer filmmakers, that's probably something that's going to become tougher because I feel like a lot of people starting now are probably filming their first things on their smartphone, yeah. which is tiny and can put it anywhere and weighs nothing. So your ability to put it here, there, and everywhere yeah. is essentially limitless. And that is going to be people's method of teaching mm. themselves how to do it. So I think exactly what you're talking about is probably going to become less seen potentially mm. for the next little while until those kind of films become the ones yeah. that are referenced and stuff in time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean about those two and like, yeah, yeah, I do the look of, yeah. Oh yeah. man. I could still go. I won't, but I'll go on, I could go on about um, Fincher because just I find it so exciting what he chooses to, to do and yeah. how he, you know, where he puts the camera and how he tells stories. It's just really He's yeah. my favorite, like, working filmmaker by far. Have um, you heard the story about on Gone Girl where Ben Affleck, like, just shifted the, the, <laughs> yeah, the just focus? Yeah, like, just to see if he'd noticed. Just to see if he'd noticed. He just did it at fuck with yeah. him to see if he'd noticed. And, and, and then he comes immediately back. Immediately like, did. He's, he's this someone's is... moved this one sixteenth yeah, yeah. of an inch. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, like, nutbag. Like, in yeah. the best way, just a nutbag. And, they, they, you know, and they... I just, I think he's, I don't think he's a particularly strange person. I think, you know, from everything I've seen and heard from him, he's just really, he's really normal, but he just, yeah. I think what he and Kubrick had in, have in common is that they've 100% got the film in their brain and they just keep going until they get in reality what's in their imagination. Yeah, That's all they're trying to do is just capture what they've already thought of. They've created yeah. it. It's just, it's a soft copy and they need a hard copy. Yeah, And then, so you need people and artisans and gear and actors to do that. So, yeah. you know, that's not the way I want it. He did 58 takes of Gyllenhaal tossing a notepad onto a passenger In seat Zodiac. of a car. Yeah, I heard about this too. You know, but yeah. why? Because he wants it to bounce and land a certain way. Yeah. And you haven't done it the way I want it yet. So do it again. Yeah. And he doesn't like digital. So he'll get it in yeah. camera if he can. And it's Brilliant. cheaper. I yeah, just exactly. have the respect I have for something like that that's uncompromising. That's what I love. I love yeah. that there's an uncompromising vision. And I mean, you know, Clint Eastwood does two takes of everything and goes, we got yeah. it. We got it. We yeah. Got it. And doesn't say action or cut. Mind. It's when yeah. you're ready. When you're That's ready. Enough. And then do two takes. I'm like, yeah, but is that good enough? I don't yeah. think it is. Because I think, yeah. you know, I think it's, uh, it might be sufficient, but it's not excellent, you know? Yeah. And so why do it if it's not excellent? I just yeah. think it's lazy. For sure. Um, and, you know, that's just two schools of thought, yeah. I think. Like, he just, no. like, I got to sit down. Let's get home. I want to yeah. go. Yeah. He's 90 something years work, old. You should work yeah. with John Seal. It'd be a great combo. Yeah. <laughs> what film has the has the best ending? Um, Usual Suspects yep. made a huge impression on me. At yeah, nice. Time. I loved that whole reveal was super. Yeah. And everything about it was really cool the music and the cuts to black and just like that he's gone yes. and you know very cool and then in <laughs> i keep going back to 1999 because it was formative yes for me like you know sixth sense and matrix and american beauty and being john malkovich come on like yeah but um fight club when that <laughs> when those buildings go down and then that you're watching the film end and then that porn cock gets <laughs> cut into Splashed the negative in. of the yep. actual film. Yeah, I just about <laughs> rioted in the theater. I lost my, it blew my mind to pieces because I didn't know. I didn't yet realize you could play with the form like that. And the fact that we've yeah. had a scene in the film an hour and a half ago where Tyler Durden's doing that and splicing them into kids Bambi and stuff. And the kid, the girl cries in the theater. <laughs> and then Tyler has done that to the movie that we're watching at Thing. the end. Like what yeah. a fucking bow on the top of that film. Yeah. Like if there was the whole movie is a fuck you. What does and Hans then, Lander say when that kind of thing happens? What does he say? Attended the cram. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Like I just, I was like, I, we literally stood up and cheered like, because yeah. it was just so funny. So perfect such a forks to the establishment kind of touch like everything about it just says like you it came full circle like what a cool yeah. cool yeah, thing nice. to do it was so really funny i just that's awesome it. very good 
Um, the time has come, Leon. We're oh, going to jump boy. onto the feature film now. <laughs> We're in the noughties now. Uh, yes, we and are. it is for Drive. Drive is, again, very tight, very efficient, incredibly lean. I love how lean this film is. And there's not a great deal of it's famously under but famously much of the dialogue was thrown out on set yes ryan gosling doesn't say a lot there's a love affair that they really barely communicate um but i re- yeah i'm realizing that really there's a big common thread and it's about sort of not only beautiful imagery but just um yeah camera choices and the way that um the frame will sort of uh the efficiency of the pacing and the frame and like yeah. drive is just so cool and tight. And I love also films like that, that also then have very bold design choices. Like, so mm-hmm. you've got kind of an efficient cutting aesthetic and efficient camera aesthetic, but then really lush visual cues to sort of yes, like the Scorpion jacket and the jacket itself and the car that mm-hmm. he drives and the sound design is an incredibly important element to the atmosphere of that film and the, but the atmosphere of the film as a whole with, you know, winding ref and chooses hot pink, like, you know, uh, scripted, like handwriting um, neon pink credits. Yes. Yeah. And everything's at night and it's everything the the score is just so sort of um, like, synthesized you know and 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 80s centric even though all of the score is contemporary and all the soundtrack uh, choices are contemporary too like the songs mm-hmm. are modern for the time but they don't necessarily sound like it and um yeah, yeah i love I- gosling was like the perfect choice and um there's just the bursts of violence in it are in sensational it just- yes I just love everything about it. Um, yeah. And it's not a film you'd sit down with your nana and enjoy. Um, but it's all, it is a very tender film at the same yeah. time as being, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, and, and another cool thing about that character, even though he doesn't say a lot, is that he's unequivocally morally centered. So um, there's many uh, like times in the film where, he makes a choice and that choice is, is very, very morally watertight. So mm-hmm. it really kind of um, bonds you to him and, and sort of invests you in, in the outcome. So, yeah. And, a, and you know what, it's funny talking about like the shining before or, or films that you want to, that you think will change when you watch them again. I could have sworn to you before I watched it that, he sort of drives off into the sunset with her at the mm-hmm. end, but he doesn't. And I somehow in my mind, I'd kind of um, taken the the scene that they have in the car in the uh, waterway at yeah. sunset. And I'd applied that to the ending of the film. Sure. And I think it's really yeah. interesting that like yeah, emotionally yeah. I completed the film for myself the way I wanted to see it in my yeah, mind yeah, yeah. in between yeah. the last time I saw it. And then the other night, yeah, of course. And and that's, I think that's um, like what I was saying before about kind of wanting to return to it because it never quite finishes itself and you want to yeah. return to see if, oh, is it going to be the way my heart wants it to be this time I'll watch it, you know? Mm-hmm. It, there's, yeah. I tweeted this the other day. There's very few films that when they finish, I, speaking for myself, there's very few films I could immediately hit play and watch them again. And that's yeah. what I felt like doing the other night. That's it's that's so cool. great. That is, that I I agree with that point. Actually, there's very few where I feel like you could immediately yeah rewatch. You'd probably yeah. want some time in between for a bit of digestion, I guess. And absolutely, yeah, yeah I know. Like people love Blade Runner, but could you put it on again after it finishes? Nah. Fucking hell, I'd be lucky to watch that. Like yeah, <laughs> like that's, right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, even a year's a much. I've probably have only seen that another one, maybe. Mm maybe twice maybe completely twice right yeah right but yeah that that i agree that'd be yeah finding one where you could instantly back on you know that I is know. that's that's tough yeah this wasn't resist. This, this like kind of has not much trivia either and then the ones i found i was kind of like i don't know if that's true but did you know ryan gosling is apparently this is probably incorrect but 
if it's true, that's cool. Replaced Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I think I read that they wanted to cast him. I think he was sort of on a list of, you know, yeah, want to be great if we can get him sort of people. But yeah, that's that's tough to imagine. Yeah, it's very, and I, very I different. I it it definitely would be a different movie. It'd be, it'd probably a musical, I think. But like, it's just yeah, I couldn't. Also, this movie, I think was probably disserviced by its marketing uh it's kind of yeah i think did it kind of marketed more like a fast and furious type (laughs) of thing wasn't there a woman that sued the theater because she didn't get like a fast and furious movie and that's what she wanted (laughs) yes that that is the bit i have yeah a woman sued because she was claiming she was being advertised for fast and furious but it was more of like a quiet crime thriller that had relatively little Oh man, it's or a mood... sustained action. You know, it's, it's, a it's mood just those piece. short, sharp bits. Yeah, it's a, it's a mood piece, and you know, it's art. It's like actual. It is actual, yeah. like Euro art with yeah. like LA neon kind of yeah. darkness infused through yeah. it. And it's yeah, you're right. It's a quiet. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a mob movie, but it's a love yeah. story, um, and. Oh, yeah damn it's oh man the fact that he's so like quiet in it too just makes yeah. it i think is just so he's he is like the modern day uh sort of man with no name eastwood i was just of. gonna say his character do- isn't named explicitly yeah. in the film so his credit is driver, driver. Yeah. yeah which is it's so cool god yeah. damn name me a cooler movie than that there's not many. yeah no i agree there's there's definitely very few that you could probably compare it to, I think, even. Yeah. Even, yeah, it's quite unique, I think. Yeah, definitely. It's um, We've come pretty close to the end, but I've got two more bits for you, Leon, before we let you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to know what's the next big thing you're really looking forward to seeing on, oh, the, yeah. on the big screen. Man, there's lots coming down the pike. Like, you know, we're I'll, put, I'll keep to... in mind, actually, we're recording this at on December, December? 2nd of 2021 yeah well i saw no time to die the other night um so that was great to get that one in the bag and then i mean there's some good gear coming along oscar season you know some amazing like west side story spielberg's west side story is coming um that is apparently uh, absolutely though they had just had previews the other night and it's magnificent and and joyous Mm -hmm. and incredible and all of those adjectives so i really I West Side the original 61 West Side Story I finally saw for the first time last year and I was I was as stunned by how vivid and and how how it just jumps off the screen like this movie from the 60s and it mm-hmm. really 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 um surprised me like the the way it's staged and choreographed and shot it was extraordinary so yeah um he's got a huge you know bar to live up to with, with his version but that'll be amazing and then you know del toro's got nightmare alley coming and yep. that looks yep. really lush and amazing and then i'm really keen to see spencer because i want to see what Kristen stewart's um sure done with that character and pablo lorraine's a really interesting artistic director another moody euro kind of sure centric director that i thought jackie was really interesting for a number of reasons and it's a similar kind of you know enterprise in that you've got a famous politically aligned you know sort of glamorous woman um at the center of it and then i missed the last jewel uh yeah, by I didn't Ridley I didn't Scott, get to see that. yeah which i'm very keen on apparently that's quite amazing and uncompromising and very cool and and yeah. house of gucci's coming also from ridley scott so yeah yeah just those big awards playing kind of sure. like lush uh yeah sort of, there's some some of that it is going to be amazing i think yeah absolutely um, so yeah this i'm going to be i'm going to be heading back a lot <laughs> all right uh, i've got one more bit for you leon uh using one of your top four films i haven't told you which i found a one star review online yeah i've removed most mentions to it so that the review still makes sense okay. and i'll see if you can pick it and possibly right. defend it if it's uh, why I'm waiting for the little guy to snap out of it, then I know which, <laughs> then you know which one it is. Okay, so the title is so boring. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, I had to sit through half an hour of this movie in class at college. I was so happy when it was over. I cannot believe we're supposed to be interested in some idiot who can't get away from the other. 
uh, that has so much time on their hands that they could just terrorize someone. What the fuck? I think it sounds like Jewel, man. That's the one. All right. <laughs> See what I mean? I, you can't really pull much out until look, it doesn't make sense. But you first, know, yeah. I, I could have sworn you're talking about Drive, but uh, yeah. Well, that person's missed out, haven't they? Yes. Well, I, I definitely, one thing you I can I bet say, they saw the 76 minute version too. Oh, yeah. Too, still, but, you know, like. I know, it's even shorter. They should be happy. Yeah. Look, it's got a, a unashamedly 70s aesthetic. So that's not going to be everyone's bag. I can appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> no, I get it. It's uh, it's it's definitely a, how funny. A unique oh, I can't opinion wait for you to see has. it. I hope you agree. Yes. Maybe you might put in a one star review after you see Jewel as well. I doubt it. I th- even even if I disliked a movie, I would never give it one. I was talking about this to someone else. Like the fact that the effort that went in to make that, and the fact that I'm now seeing it on a scale of one to ten gives it at least two. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. And on a one to three, on one to five, rather, it's at least like a one and a half or something That's like that. It. Like there's no, I could not, like n- no one set out making that with the intention of making it bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I know. It's, it's And people forget too, it's just entertainment. Like, yeah. you know, people have this expectation. You go, hang on a second. Like you were sitting in the dark, stuffing your face, you know, in front of a screen and Yet you're like you're demanding, you know, yeah. the, the the greatest thing I've never seen before that needs to blow my mind. It's like, come yeah. on, who are you? Like, you know, you've just you, all you've done is really hand over money to be like, okay, tell me a story. So yeah. that's what they're doing, you know. And if it wasn't the most amazing thing, well, you still had a pretty good time, didn't you? Time. Because you exactly. got to sit in the dark and have someone tell you a story for two hours for basically pocket change, and it costs them millions. So get over yourself. And exactly. unless you know, it's as bad as like Tommy Wiseau's The Room, <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't, you really don't have much to complain about. Same I reckon. Exactly. I think even you know, that's famously the famous line. You know, it's like pizza, even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. Still so. good. Yeah, for sure. And as Hans Lander said, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> no, uh, Leon, that was awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Man, I really what appreciate you coming on. Oh, um, I really, we should put in like a code word at this point. So if anyone has lasted this long that they can like email you and get, win a prize because I realized that my answers have uh, in some ways so <laughs> probably, probably exceeded your expectations, but I did, no, no, I did warn great. you, you know, strap you in did. like, yeah, you know, you did. So I, hope I haven't nerded everyone out too massively, no, no, but um, I just great. love, you know, getting my hands in the dough with this stuff. Like you it's could great. talk about it forever because there's just so much to discuss. It's the best. Yeah, it is. It's the best. And what a great, like, what a treat and what a privilege we have to, like, get these incredible artisans to sort of do this stuff and turn yeah. out stuff that's like magic. It's like magic. Yeah. We you know every time it's new and mm-hmm. some of them are great and some of them aren't, but some of them are, like, you could put in a time capsule and shoot it into space because it needs to live forever because it's just yeah. so brilliant and isn't it amazing that we can be these little hairless apes that stroll around on this rock and you can achieve something like that it's just yeah, wild man. and like you know they speak to us so emotionally and connect to us so deeply you know all different parts of our lives that they 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 make up a part of the human experience yeah yeah and so cool. whatever you're into there will be some touchstone for you that just is so meaningful like these ones we've spoken about tonight that it's a it's a joyous thing and yeah. i think that like going to a symphony or you know seeing a beautiful piece of art or a sunset or something like that it's 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 on that level you know yeah man. um and so yeah it's uh, it's so much more to me than, than just movies so i love it absolutely um if anyone disagrees with your opinions on films they can reach out to you Please at several do. several locations oh, you're on I'm twitter get angry villages with pitchforks <laughs> yeah if I, look I do, like I said, 836 we views and counting. So if you're interested in that, grab me on yeah. Twitter at Leon J. Murray. Uh, or if you, I suppose, might be interested in the life of a person who talks into a black uh, stick <laughs> for a living, then uh, life of a voiceover guy. I'm on Instagram, obviously, Leon Murray dot voiceover. Or um, I do... You're doing Watch It Wombat as well. Yes, right? the, the reviews, reviews on... Stuff. Yeah, at Watch It Wombat do those uh, reviews for them. So that's why I'm lucky enough to get, you know, to these sort of 
uh june screenings and what have you a bit earlier yeah. which is great but um yeah people could catch me in all of those places uh perfect now that was excellent thank you so much leon we really appreciate the time thanks for doing an episode man yeah my pleasure thank you Very great good. pod Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Bottomless Popcorn. For bonus content, news, and upcoming guests, follow us on Instagram at Bottomless Popcorn Pod. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. If you'd like to contact the show, you can email us at bottomlesspopcornpod at gmail.com. And be sure to leave a review of your own favorite film wherever you listen to podcasts.